In this video, I will be talking about fetch XML. Now I will be covering this as a multi-part series. So first video is about introduction to fetch XML. Now, what is fetch XML? Fetch XML is a proprietary XML based query language. Now this is mainly used to query dynamic CRM or a power platform dataverse table. Now, fetch XML is basically used to retrieve data from Dataverse. So you have some piece of code, which is in the format of XML, and you just execute that using multitude of ways. So I'm going to cover most of the ways through which you can execute the fetch XML code to retrieve the record from a Dataverse table. Now, from a Dataverse table, you can retrieve one column or more than one column you can put up a condition around that column you can put some filtering around that column and retrieve that record set so there are many things which you can perform in the query which i'm going to cover this in this multi-part series now fetch xml is used to define views for model driven app how your view is structured what is the column width of that specific column while displaying that content now, fetch XML can also be used while authoring a report. So if you want to generate a SSRS kind of a report, a SQL Server reporting services kind of a report, then you can also put the fetch XML. You can have those fetch XML code written, and then you can uh, provide as an input to the RDL file, uh, and you will be presented with the result set. Now, it is used for read operations as the name indicates fetch so fetch indicates like you are going to read the content from a backend dataverse table when you see the syntax it uses the logical name to query so uh, the logical name of the table the logical name of the column so it will use those kind of naming conventions so as you see over here name equal to account now account in small case is a logical name for one of the table and then attribute name equal to name is the name of one of the column within the account table so this is how that code is written now it returns up to 5000 rows of from dataverse table now that's kind of a upper limit but there are multitude of ways through which you can extract more than that rows so you can use paging or you can use a uh, uh, multiple fetch xml query to retrieve more than 5000 rows of record how to download fetch xml so i am going to demonstrate that uh, in this video on how to download the fetch xml from a model driven app so if you have a model driven app and if you have a table and a view created for that specific application then you can go into the filters and then you can start downloading the fetch xml now uh, a new method has also been derived whereby you can go into the views the list of views and then you can download the fetch xml from there also now first let's uh, look into where do we find all this fetch xml things so i'm in make.powerapps.com interface so let me show you the table so these are the backend tables which will exist within your environment now there are some out of the box table like account or contact so if i go into account you will see the table and if you click on column you are here you can see all the columns listed like account name address one city main phone primary contact so these are the list of columns now if you see this table if you go into the properties here you will see you will find the logical name so this is pretty much important so if you just scroll here you will see this item over here which is named as a logical name now this is important when you write a fetch xml query so the name of the table in a lower case uh, in this case okay so it can be different but uh, sometimes it is appended with uh, the, uh, some characters you know uh, alphanumeric characters so then uh, that becomes that logical name now here you will see the logical name as account now I have uh, some column over here. So let me pick up one of the columns. So let me call this as main phone. Now main phone is a title. If I click on edit column here, you will find and under advanced option, the 
logical name is not main phone but telephone one so it differs depending on how you have structured or how you have named all your uh, columns you know now this is out of the box table so this is that general convention okay so when you write something make sure that you use the logical name also if i go into out of the box table uh, from out of the box table to the custom table so i've already created some custom table like one of the table is airlines now within airlines if i go into the properties the table name of this is you will see something like this g corp underscore airlines so what it has done it has taken the publisher name appended underscore and then put the name of the table right so that means uh, it has created its own uh, format and then this is how you uh, get the logical name of the table now this is how it is formed similarly if i go into one of the field like there is a field called as email if i click on edit column the name of the logical name of this column is gcorp underscore email because the publisher name through which this solution was created was gcorp and that's why it has appended gcorp underscore email now this is just like a high level introduction on the dataverse table logical name i'm providing you so that when you start writing fetch xml you get to know from where this name is coming now let me open a model driven app a simple model driven app which i have created for airlines so this lists all the airlines like most of the airlines of the world so if i go into say one of the record uh, then you will see some information right now let me go back here now if you see in this particular list okay so this is a listing of all the records if you go into edit filters here you will be able to see a an option to download the fetch xml now what fetch xml it will allow you to download is the view fetch xml so whatever column you specify in this view will come as a part of this download fetch xml so you can put various conditions you can put uh, uh, some filtering you can put some uh, selected columns so then it will pick up those and then if you click on download fetch xml then it will allow you to download so let me download this fetch xml so if i download this fetch xml then it will ask you to save it in a device and now you can open this file so let me open this fetch xml file now as you see the fetch xml file is open i'll just do a right click and format this document and this is how the fetch xml has been derived now let me just minimize it a bit yeah so the first statement is fetch the first element within fetch so if you see fetch and close fetch and then you have entity and then close entity and then within entity you can have attributes so you have attributes you can have link entity you can have so many things over here now why do i see many columns over here because the view had more than maybe five or six columns right and that's why you see this list now if i go into the list over here so let me go into the list here i can see so many things now let's uh, uh, go into an other view like say aircrafts and stuff now if i go into aircrafts and stuff and i can see there are three columns right if I go over here, uh, I have an option to say edit filter. I have an option to download the fetch XML. So let me download this. Keep open that XML file and do a format. Now, as you see over here, there are other things which has come alongside it. So it has taken the state code, name, airline ID, total aircraft, total staff. So it has provided me with this information. And why do you see this link entity name is because uh, there is an image associated with that specific uh, column. Now, this is basically all about fetch XML. Now, there are other ways through which you can download fetch XML instead of going into the filter. Like if you go into the view over here, so these are the list of views. There are system views and the personal views. Anything which is as a person icon is a personal view. If you go to manage and share views, there is an option through which you can even download a fetch XML from there. So you pick up any view, like let me pick up owners and supervisor view. I click on this three dots and I can download a fetch XML. So let me download that. Keep 
open the file and then this fetch xml file will be downloaded so as you see over here this is how the fetch xml file gets downloaded now if you want to write a simple fetch xml so the the logic is pretty much simple so let me go into say one of the folder over here and let me create a uh, fetch xml intro dot xml so at the end of the day it's an xml file so let me create a statement so this is that statement so if i put fetch then it resolves automatically so as you see over here this is that fetch statement the first fetch statement uh, and then you specify what do you want so let me do a maximizing of this so yeah so the so you can specify how many records you want so i can say i want top five records so i can just type in for fetch top equal to five you can even put a single quotes so that's fine so i'll just say i want five records and within the fetch you specify the entity name so you just say entity and it will put that closing tag and within entity now you need not specify uh, like any more parameters in fetch that's fine but uh, if you put some limit then it will only retrieve that many records with an entity you can specify the name of the table so the attribute name is name and the value is the logical name of the table so in my case if i just type in account then it will list down all the account like top five accounts okay now if i just do a format document this is how the fetch xml would be formatted then within entity i will say i have an attribute so i'll just say attribute tag and it will put that closing tab now you can get rid of this closing tab and you can just use a single line of statement which opens and closes at the same time so that's completely fine and you just specify which column you want attribute name equal to name so here what we are doing is we are querying the account table and we are querying one of and we are asking the fetch xml to retrieve only one column or an attribute with the name okay so this is like a simple fetch xml there are many tools which you can use so one of the tool is uh, xml fetch xml builder and then there are other xml uh, builder tools so uh, i'll show you how the fetch xml tool will look like so this is how the fetch xml tool will look like and here you can specify the information like how we have specified fetch top equal to 50 entity name is gcop underscore airlines now if i execute this it will list down all the airline record okay now it has given you so many columns right now why it has given you all the columns is because you haven't explicitly specified the attribute now if you want to just get only one of the item you can just say add attribute and then specify the attribute name so if i just want to list down only the the name i can get the name and attribute name is gcop underscore name i click on execute and i get only the name as an output so this is how you can frame that xml and then give it to the query processing engine to process it so that's it folks this is all about a high level introduction to fetch xml now you can use fetch xml at multiple places to execute now i've just given you one example like an xml fetch xml builder tool to execute the fetch xml but there are places like power apps power automate uh, and other systems through which you can just provide that fetch xml and get that query executed so i'll cover that in my upcoming videos thanks for watching